No, it's the Fievel. It's Fievel. Is it? Is it? I was, you know, I was actually thinking about that the other day. Is that still themed to Fievel? I believe so. Yeah. Wow. It's like Fievel's incredible playland. <laughs> which I, I don't. I can't imagine how any kid even knows <laughs> what the hell that is. Wow, it's so. That's so dated. Cause that yeah, be, that entire could that, area. Could that, could that be any less? Uh, it's like four things, and not one of them is relevant. It's Woody Woodpecker, Barney, Fievel, and Curious George. Man, they're just all they so old. on my sage uh, well, this is like a month and a half ago now this is, this is kind of a while ago but they had uh, they had an interesting article on it well they have interesting articles on there I think it's actually a very good website uh, that they have a bunch of interesting stuff I do recommend checking it out if you're uh, if you're very into Disney they are very pro Disney just to let you know um, <laughs> they they will acknowledge flaws but they don't exactly accept them <laughs> But they do write very thought-provoking articles, I think. And I did read one. Like I said, this is a little... This is kind of an older article now. But the article was arguing that Universal is... He put it in baseball terms. He's saying Universal is hitting home runs and Disney is hitting singles and doubles. And he was sort of posing the question, you know, which is better? Which is better now? Which is better in the long term? Which is going to draw more people, which is going to create a better park in the end, a more well-rounded experience for everybody. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and it did make me think about, you know, about Disney and Universal in those terms, you know, how Universal really is going for the giant e-ticket attractions, these big dark rides, these big you know, crowd pleasers going for the the teenage, the, the whatever it is, thirteen to thirty crowd, and mm. Disney is focusing completely not on that on uh, mm-hmm. the under thirteen crowd. It seems like pretty much, and they're putting in mostly meet and greets and focusing on infrastructure. But it's like you know, fast pass infrastructure, not like. They're, it's not like they're building more monorail or something. It's not like that infrastructure. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what do you think, Brian? We should say here that this is really about Walt Disney World. We're saying Disney. We're using the umbrella term Disney. Uh, but we're really only talking about Walt Disney World. Walt Disney World and Universal Orlando. So anyway, where were you? Sorry. Um... I mean, the first thing that I think of is, is, is Disney really hitting singles and doubles even? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I'm like, sure. you know, it's, it's playing small ball. I guess it's that <laughs> it's the national league ball. It's called sometimes. I, I guess, obviously, I mean, the analogy is set up to be that they're, they're, they're both scoring just in different ways. Right? Is yeah, that, I think that, that was a point. It's the idea they're hitting singles yeah. and doubles, but they're all, the, but they're getting there. the guys home that way. Yeah. Right? Disney, and then, but Universal just gets it in in one shot. Uh, and, and I kind of feel that's a little too generous on the Disney side. <laughs> I can't argue that Universal's not swinging for the fences. Uh, they obviously, in my mind, are. But, yeah, I don't, it, Disney... I mean, maybe they're hitting singles, but they're stranding guys on base, if you ask me. <laughs> I don't see where they're even scoring anymore. They're maybe drawing some walks. <laughs> it's getting to that point. Because <laughs> really, yeah, what are they really doing uh, at all? They're expanding um, the hub. That's, that's, they're not really doing anything <laughs> that's, that's making me take notice, or at least not in a good way. I've really been taking notice lately to the negative uh, by the lack of what they're doing or 
by the underlying implications of the things they are doing, which we'll get into in a minute. To your point of comparing the strategy, the current strategy of, of Disney versus Universal, uh, the point of that they're going for different age groups. I think that's definitely happening, but that's always sort of been the case to a certain extent. So that's nothing entirely new. Uh, and I don't even know if that's really the problem. And that's certainly not what's exactly getting my personal feelings and opinion to really be down on Disney and much more up on Universal these days. And actually, I mean, I don't know that I'm really much higher on Universal than I was before. Even with all the, the really aggressive expansion now, um, it's great, but I think I still like them about the same as I did. It's kind of even, more or less, with me. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's, I would, I've been the same way, I think. I yeah, for me, it's yeah. more of that I'm really just hating on Disney now. <laughs> and it's not, again, it's not so much, oh, they're going for kids... Although I think that there is a problem there uh, in that really the whole the whole nexus of Disneyland with Walt Disney was uh, at least the way he told it you know it was he was it was the, the merry-go-round story with his daughters um, it's I want to create something that the adults can do with the kids together and they'll all enjoy it right that was what Disneyland was supposed to be that's what he was going for and I kind of feel like they're they're abandoning that and it's just happening recently because really when you think about it what are the parents getting out of the meet and greet mm -hmm. you know waiting on a 25 minute line to just take a picture of your kid in a in a sweaty person <laughs> in a suit you know what is the parent really getting out of that besides the classic you know it, it warms my heart to see my kid having fun like that's fine sure sure yeah. but then walt disney could have said that 50 plus years ago and never wanted to create disneyland in the first place it's like well even though i'm just on the bench and just all i get to do is watch my daughters on the carousel having fun it still, it makes me feel good that they're having fun at this moment, and I'm providing it for them, so that's good enough. <laughs> but that's not what Disney was. That's not who Walt Disney was. That wasn't his philosophy. That's not why this whole thing started. Yeah, that's an interesting point. So, you know, it shouldn't be, it, you know, it shouldn't be good enough today. But they're kind of going in that direction of just kind of, now it is just all for the kids. Yeah. You know, and it was, and Disney was always skewed more toward younger, but you had Tomorrowland which was always more for the teenagers uh, and really even even adults. Oh, yeah. Uh, but what have they done in the last decade or so? They've turned it into a slightly different twist on Fantasyland. Yeah, it's all Pixar characters. And, and that's it. Yeah. You know, it's not gone, long gone are the thought-provoking, the actual forward-looking attractions, rides, experiences, exhibits, whatever. And it's unfortunate. You know, I think in in many ways it's it's like Disney is just becoming a a kitty park. And I think that stinks <laughs> right there. But a bigger problem right now for me is the fact that Disney isn't even really putting in. And I think that's where the singles doubles part of that analogy came from because they're not doing as much and what they do do is smaller scale you know it, it's to, to use the the, uh, the old Disney terminology in this it's C and D ticket stuff whereas Universal is doing the E ticket stuff and doing a lot more of it yeah I mean, Disney's not even putting in much and instead they're spending money on other things uh, you can call it infrastructure if you'd like, but uh, I guess this this new My Magic Plus is uh, that's what it is. My Magic Plus, mm. 
That's really there's not like a my magic and my magic plus like it's a different tier. No, it's just it's my just magic. my magic plus. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's you know, Disney spent like a billion dollars on that, like more. I mean, by they keep spending. Last I read, it was a billion and a half. <laughs> it, it's just they. It, it's unbelievable how much money they've uh, poured into this thing, and it's something that nobody really wants. I mean, in the end, I don't know how well the whole thing will really play out, but right now it's pretty ugly. I really haven't seen anyone be up on it. I haven't really read any positive reviews. (laughs) Hmm, really? Well, the whole idea is that your vacation is planned out ahead of time, and by that I mean it's, you know, down to the detail. What ride you're gonna do when, and yeah. it's it's we, we we did already talk about this, but uh, you know it, it I think it's worth going over again because this is supposed to be the future. I guess you know one way or another it will be the future. It is the future of Disney. <laughs> They're forcing it on you. It's the future today, right? And the things I've been reading are you know you're because you can control your reservations through your smartphone. Everyone's just looking through their phone all day. Uh, they're they're preoccupied with that, and the and and that experience as opposed to soaking in the environment and the rides and yeah, the well, kids yeah. having fun. Yeah, and, I mean, right there, that that, that's stuff. that's a problem if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, because that's but, you know, you're supposed to be on vacation. You're supposed to be having a good time. Yeah, exactly. You go on a vacation to get away from that shit, to not have to check your phone. You know, it used to be your watch. You know, it's just like get away from the watch, <laughs> right? And watch right, the clock, right. and then actually just fast pass kind of changed that, um, to an extent. Yes, they didn't yeah. enforce the time window really, but at least until the next one was valid, you know, you maybe had to do a little watch watching that you didn't have to do before. And yeah, now it, yeah, it's like you're encouraged to not just bring your phone in the park, but to use it a lot, right? And you're on vacation. You wanted to get away from that. <laughs> At least if you're, you know, maybe 30 or older, maybe 40 or older. I don't know. I'm younger than that, but I <laughs> personally, and I'm not the biggest, neither one of us are the biggest phone guys. No, I'm definitely um, not. <laughs> so, you know, we, we, we skew a little older than our age, I guess, with that. I mean, I guess the way the youth is today, though, I mean, maybe it's inevitable by the time they're adults. Maybe everybody will be buried in their phones anyway, but... Well, I mean, I think, there's I think no need is, th- that, that's already happened. It is today. Yeah, but it, there's it, no but, need but the to... the thing is... It's like Disney's encouraging it but, faster right, than it needs problem, to happen. Though. It's like, just let... If that's going to happen anyway, because people want to have their phone in the park, just for the texting and the Twitter and the... Right. The shitter and whatever the new shit will <laughs> come shitter. out in the next, you know, 20 or so years. Um, that's fine. That's going to happen anyway. But yeah, why encourage it faster... Why push it on people who are not of that generation? You know, because mm-hmm. you know, if you're if you are 45 and but you have the kids and you're going to do your Disney vacation, you know, it's you, why force those people to now have to have their phones on them and have to look at them a hell of a lot when they wouldn't have otherwise and they could have not had to do that. That is the trend uh, that Disney is laying out. They're forcing everything on you. They're, they're they're forcing you to make ride reservations. They're forcing you to book everything ahead of time. They're forcing you to, if you want to eat at one of the restaurants, they're forcing you to book that like 180 days out or something. It's it's actually, it's totally ridiculous. Yeah. That they're forcing it, you to do you all these things. Yeah, if you don't, you don't get you it. Know, if you just want to go there and be casual about it, you kind of can't anymore. Hmm. You know, it's difficult now and it's going to be even more difficult as time goes on. Yeah. So it, it's just, it's, it's really kind of nasty that they're forcing all of this stuff on you well why is disney doing this all right let's just get let's cut to the chase here we can complain about the nuts and bolts of it which they kind of suck too in their own way you know just the te- the cell phone thing in particular we just went over but you know why why are they doing this uh what is this all about and you know that's really again where i have the problem because all right encouraging cell phone use Personally, I don't like it, but I could overlook it. I could still get around it. 
I'm not going to necessarily have my head buried in my phone 50 to 75% of a day at Disney World. So, fine. If people who are younger or even just older people who want to get into it with their kids or whatever uh, want to do that, good for them. I don't have to do it. doesn't, you know, affect me. Uh, maybe there's a few things that I kind of get shut out of. Like, I guess I'll never eat at Be Our Guest. And mm, I'll never... Yeah. It's like you know, if you get if you well, do, you can't you can't pile up fast passes. Oh, and, I guess I won't be using, ride things multiple I guess times. I won't be using fast pass much anymore. But you know, so again, it's not good, but it's like it it wasn't the last straw for me. You know, the last straw is just everything piled up, <laughs> and and it, and that's why Universal. This is where Universal comes into play, because it's not just what Disney's doing on their own. It's the Disney in comparison to Universal. Yes, yeah. And that's where it really comes comes to light for me. I mean, still to this day, I mean, I don't think either Disney, even even Disney, definitely not Universal, but even Disney are delusional enough at this point to believe that they're ever going to eliminate the other. Right? <laughs> can, is that... Can no, you agree with that? That's, if, you, if either one of them thinks that, they're... I don't know what they're thinking. But even at this point, I think Disney has to be pretty realistic that... Universal's here to stay. Oh, yeah. You know, you there may have been a time, it. maybe from like 90 to. Yeah, maybe the, the 90s. I think the Eisner era. Was... Maybe the entire 90s. They may have honestly believed that they could have driven Universal out of Florida again, made them retreat back to, to California only, and and been able to successfully do that. There probably was a time when yeah. they thought that. Michael Eisner, I think he thought he could put Universal and Bush Tampa. Mm. And see, I think he <laughs> thought he could put them all out of business. Yeah, just build some more parks, do it, you know, similar but and but a, a, a crap you know, we load think better, of, a crap but, load of hotel rooms, and like yeah, you know, and right. So, I think in both cases the parks are just constantly trying to increase their share because that's all they really can do. And currently we have Universal aggressively building. Their strategy is, we're going to build, we're going to build a lot, we're going to keep investing a ton of money, we're going to do impressive, in many cases, never never before seen type of attractions, and we're just going to go for it. Just going to, we're all in. We're just going to, and we're going to keep doing it. And we'll throw in, and in between the the really mega impressive never before seen stuff we'll throw some maybe you kind of maybe it's just a new twist on something you have seen you know a la Transformers uh, just a new twist on Spider-Man um, yeah. or we'll, even the like the Simpsons uh, food options or like that it's that was just sort of another twist on what they already did in Hogsmeade yeah um, but we'll throw those in on the off years in between so there's always something new every calendar year throw it out there they advertise it and it's just come on down <laughs> yeah they wave in with open arms and just they just invite you in come experience our new incredible mind-blowing attraction and you know and you and, and decide for yourself how good is this is this better than anything disney's doing right now you decide come in at your will, stay as long as you'd like, you know. Don't have to worry about reservations five years in advance. Yes. Yeah, and this fast pass bullshit. You don't have to worry about it. In fact, hell, you could even be in Florida for Disney and just have decided in the middle of your week or, <laughs> or whatever, a week and a half that you're there, that on a, on a, almost on a whim, you know, sort of an impromptu universal visit and they don't care good but you know what we built you know we're, con we're we've built up so much and we're continuing to build that like they're confident that you know when you come over for that impromptu you're going to stay longer than you expected right you're going to love it and maybe next time you'll you know you talk about increasing the share maybe next time you'll actually do you'll plan a split like we'll do half our week in disney and then half our week in universal you actually go in with that philosophy the next time around. Because this time, it was an impromptu. Uh, the kids were a little younger, but you know what? Our next Florida vacation in three years, they're going to be the prime age, and we're going to totally split our time. 
Mm, yeah. Right? And that's what they're doing. Yeah. Just check it out. We think you'll like it. Yes. It's kind of like the oldest way to run a business. It goes back to, you know, it's just, it's just good old fashioned American business. <laughs> right? Yeah, you build a great product and it'll sell itself. Right. It's the right way to do things. If you ask me, that's just my opinion, but yes, sure, I agree. That's, you know, it's, it's maybe it's a little old fashioned these days, but I like it. I'd like to see more of it. And, and that's where Universal's at. And then in the other corner, <laughs> with me in one corner, <laughs> and in the other corner, the park that's bringing real terror to Gotham City. <laughs> and in the other corner, we have Walt Disney World, where they are not building, really. Uh, when they do build something, it takes forever they are it's getting ridiculous well it took him how long to build the the the, the mine train the seven dwarves mine train oh gee it took him like two years or something it took him so long yeah for like a junior coaster yeah and i, I understand their stuff's impressive and very detailed Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, it, but I, it's, it's not a, like they cut corners in the construction. It's always been, though, and they used to be able to get things op built and open faster than they do now. Uh, and plus, now you have Universal, who's, you know, they've, in many ways, even up there. They've already, they've always been, like, right behind Disney in their quality. Mm -hmm. They've kind of always been the second best. They still are, I guess. They still aren't at... Disney level as far as how detailed and how much they cover all backstage elements and that sort of thing. No holes through it kind yeah. of thing. They still miss a couple of spots. Yeah. But they they are probably even better than they were. Are they? I think so. I, mean, I think they're trying okay. harder with the Potter stuff. Okay. If anything. And okay. But again, they prove how you can do it with that detail, but do it at a reasonable pace. Oh, sure. And not have it take seven years. So it's not like, you know, quality, just because it's quality, it takes, obviously because it's quality, it takes somewhat longer, but not as long as it's taking these days. Now it's just clearly the fact that they're just splitting up the budget from year to year to year and, you know, kind of spreading it out mm -hmm. purposely. So that, I mean, they're not building aggressively at all. So they're not really adding much. And instead what they're doing is they're, they're using manipulation to kind of, uh, not to kind. They're using they're using manipulative techniques to increase their share instead. You know, it's all kind of underhanded and really very devious, if you ask me. Uh, by forcing you to pre-plan everything a half a year ahead. Now, they've always, or for a long time anyway, they have been devising techniques to force you to do your entire vacation just on their property. Okay, and that's no secret by this point. They've always been yeah, kind no, of that's been going on for a long doing while now. But I think, I, again, and it just recently, the last five or so years, they've really gone off the charts with that <laughs> it's really gotten a lot worse it's it, it, it's gotten just just insane as far as with the, the ticket prices and the fact that it's not in, it's not until you do like a seven day ticket that it's actually a reasonable price per day yeah a and now even you know with all this magic plus stuff it really is all about forcing you you know it went from i think it kind of went from persuading you to stay uh on their property the whole time to now it's it, they've really gone to the point of they're just trying to make it simply unfeasible yes to that, not stay on their property the right. entire vacation and that's what's just so devious right we're gonna make it so you can't afford to go anywhere else you just will not have you you will simply just not have enough money Unless you're super rich, you will not have enough money to hit any of these other parks. Universal, SeaWorld, Bush Tampa, Legoland's there now. 
Oh, yeah. You will just not have enough money to do it. You know? I mean, they're also hitting you with your time because they are forcing that six months advanced planning. The, 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 the whole... The structure of the Fast Pass, even, uh, I personally feel... Uh, will will result in you getting less done in your day. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. I haven't really tried it. I haven't been back there with this new Fast Pass Plus. Uh, but I, but just the way it, the way I look at it, or the way I see it when I read about it, it just seems like it's going to actually result in you doing less. Which I wouldn't be surprised if that's sort of the point. Yeah, it's going to be more difficult to do. Not only um, just more rides on you know, different things, but multiple rides <laughs> on any one particular ride that you happen to like a lot. It's going to make that more difficult, too. Mm -hmm. And and not only sure. not only do they want you to pre-plan everything, but they want you to prepay as well. And then Disney Vacation Club, it, they really push that, where you're, you're already paying for it, so you go down there. The Disney Dining Plan, you're already paying for mm, it. They want, yeah, exactly what they want. You know, you the... Know. the um, they're, they're, they link your credit card up with the um, the wristband that they give you. Oh. So, you so you don't think about it. You just, <laughs> you just spend. You swipe your wrist and it's done. Yeah, don't even get me started on that. Yeah. Talk about devious. So they're, they're definitely trying to, you know, <laughs> leech as much money <laughs> off of you as possible. That's even the... before you step foot in the park. Yeah. You know, um, you, you set up your dining reservation and it's like, well, I booked this like six months ago. I have to go. What am I going to do? Cancel? Mm. I'm here now. Yeah. I spent the money. I so flew down here. You're definitely not going to. And that's even just, that may not even necessarily take business away. You know, just for one meal, you're not going to go to Universal. But mm. that could even just be a local restaurant. Oh, yeah. That sure. you would have done or something that now is getting screwed. Um,. <laughs> Where Branching and, out to the locals. And, and even if you know that the meal in that, wherever you made your reservation and on the Disney property is not going to be as good. But like you said, you probably stick with it because it's like, yeah, I, but I booked this six months ago. Or in many cases, I already paid for it. Mm -hmm, so yeah. how can I possibly now justify spending more money now that I'm here to do this other thing? Uh, of course, I'm just going to go to the Disney thing. That I both booked and paid for months in advance. Yeah, they're a, they're a monster company. We, they, you, you can't deny it. You can't fight it. It's just the way things are. But in in many ways, for me personally, that's why it, this bothers me even more because they're so huge, they're so powerful, and there's no reason why they still couldn't just be doing the same thing Universal's doing. Just build, just continue to be creative. Um, and it doesn't always have to be a ride or an attraction. They could still occasionally alternate and do a hotel project again or something. And that's fine. I understand that everything and not everybody on earth just loves rides and attractions and, and just the core theme park experience. But there's no reason why they need to just start getting so just devious like this. Mm -hmm. Like they really are becoming just that quintessential, almost it's like the movie like. <laughs> um, just evil corporation. It's like, like their mustache twirling, uh, cape wearing, <laughs> dressed all in black, bad guys. Yeah, I mean they, they're just it's just it's manipulation. They're manipulating yeah. you, whether you, you realize it or not. They are. They just want to work everybody like a puppet. I want to stick your hand up your ass and work <laughs> you like a puppet to do what they want you to do. Universals also giving giving you a reason to repeat visit by oh. having something new the next time around. Whereas Disney is just, I guess, trying to squeeze as much out of you as they can that, on the one time you're there. And then, <laughs> I, I mean, I guess they're also, I know they want repeat. They want loyalty. That's also, they're doing that also in, again, a sort of a devious fashion with the vacation club uh, and mm -hmm. stuff like yeah. that. Where again, yeah. it's all about this idea that you now belong to something or you're paying into something that's going to ensure like just again that when your next vacation comes around you're going to be much more likely to just do the Disney thing because it's like well we're already kind of involved in this. You're already paying for it. Yeah. So it's like again why are you going to go somewhere else? 
Like, I can't not go. I, I already put money into this. Yeah. So it's just, it's just, they just get again you, but it's in the wrong way. <laughs> Instead of just playing to the individual and, and, and you know, they're playing to your heart, not to sound too whimsical or what I'm trying to, I'm almost like romanticizing now the whole <laughs> thing, but it, it is, a, I think, a reasonable way to look at it. You know, instead of playing to your heart or your mind, kind of your sense of wonder and wowing you, it's just all about, you know, kind of handcuffing you <laughs> and playing to your wallet and, you know, so that you just can't afford to even think about doing anything else, which is just terrible. You mentioned it's just, it's, it seems like Disney just isn't spending money. They haven't put new attractions in. It's like they oh. are spending money, but it's like they're spending money well, on crap that nobody oh, is yeah. asking for. Nobody really wants. Yeah, well, it's done under the guise that it's convenience for you. Yeah, it's kind of bullshit, though. But, well, yeah. But also, they are, I mean, there, there are a couple of things on the table. You know, they are going to build Pandora, you know, in 2028 or whatever the hell it's going <laughs> to open. But yeah, uh, it is going to happen. So, I mean, there's something. Obviously, they're not in any rush they're not using that as a strategy it's not it doesn't really play into it. it's just it's they just do that it's almost like they just do that because they kind of feel like i guess they have to once a decade you have to do something <laughs> oh just to kind of keep uh -huh. just to keep the status quo of disney going but they really rather just not <laughs> build any other new attractions just maintain the ones they have and uh. again just try to get more mileage out of them Oh, of so course. instead of adding more for you to do, so that you have, you know, they could do that too if they want you to stay longer, stay your whole vacation and not go to Universal, just keep adding rides until you can't possibly see it all. Yeah. Um, you know, you need a full week, but no, they'd rather not do that. They'd rather just put up all these roadblocks in your way so that it takes longer than it used to to do the same amount of rides. That's a very good way of putting it. There's speed bumps in the road, hmm. slowing you down, so you can't get as much done. Yeah. So then you do have assholes to keep going back for the full week, and then yeah, and then Pandora is just them throwing people a bone. I think for the fans. It's like I mean, initially I kind of saw it as as their them firing back. Oh yeah. To, well, to I think Potter. everybody did. Yeah. Uh, you know, but now at this point, I don't see it as being the the retaliation to Potter. It turns out the retaliation to Potter was My Magic Plus. <laughs> yeah. You know, believe it or not, and I, I that was the the returning shot. I mean, just just think about it. what what would you rather have? Would you rather have Pandora and Avatar themed land and a uh, an overhaul of Disney or part of Disney Studios to be turned into Star Wars land uh, and an East Coast version of Cars Lane. Would you rather have all that stuff? Or would you rather be able to book three rides in advance before you step foot in the park? What would you rather do? That's a great way to put it. Yeah. That money could have been <laughs> put to a lot better use. I mean, if you want to phase out Paper Fast Pass and go digital, I'm fine with that. But this is like something else. So this is just... I, I'm not on board with it. No. So you said before that you've been reading complaints about Disney. Yes. Online, right? Yes. So I could probably guess, but it, so who's complaining? The huge Disney files. Okay. So they actually are, they're seeing, they're starting to turn. But now see, that's interesting because this is another thought I've, I've had because I'm sure the the Disney files, as you called them, are probably, what, 20s, late 20s, early yeah, 30s? mid-20s to mid-30s or so. Yeah, right? It's, give or take. It's, they're, they're, you know, maybe they're park enthusiasts at heart. They do like some other parks and things. Some of them don't, though. I know some people are, are all about Disney because they don't like thrill rides, really. Oh, definitely, They're not really yeah. for them, so they like the Disney stuff. So, you all right, so they're, a lot of them are noticing so I, I really think that uh, along as part of this new strategy that Disney's employing, that they really are writing off 
the enthusiast crowd. We'll just use the term enthusiast to just kind of blanket everybody. Okay. So it's like us. We're not really Disney files or Disney nuts. Uh, we're more just general park enthusiasts. You know, you can't... I kind of feel you can't be a park enthusiast and not appreciate Disney since they... No. I mean, Walt Disney started the, the modern theme park. Give or take Walt or not, depending <laughs> on who you talk to. <laughs> Uh, and it seems like they're really just kind of, uh, it seems like they just don't want us anymore hmm. is the vibe I'm getting as part, you know, as part of what they're doing, the, the this greater strategy they have, it it's kind of, kind of like a middle yeah. finger <laughs> to the, to the enthusiasts. Yes. I don't know. I don't know if they're consciously doing that, but it does definitely does feel that way. Well, it definitely. Yeah. I mean, no doubt that it definitely comes out to be that in the end, mm -hmm. but uh, but then I guess what what does it come down to? Uh, that we just don't spend as much money as a family of four. Whenever they go, they're going to spend a lot more money than whenever people like you and I go or hardcore Disney fans. Because e even even they're not going to spend as much, I think. Yeah, no, you may be a hardcore fan. You love going, but you're always going to look for the cheapest way to go. Uh I mean, you know how to work it. You know how to work the system. You know how to work everything so that you work the discounts so you get the cheapest admission or the best uh, annual pass deal or whatever it is that you can get your hands on. You know, uh, at least up until recently now that it's changed, but you knew how to work the fast pass system so that you could still get, certainly get at least every ride in, in in a day, if not get your multiple rides on the ones you wanted to do in all in that same day. You know, you knew how to do that. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I think I you you say you don't know if, if they're even consciously thinking about it. I don't know. I kind of feel like they are. I don't know if they designed the system purposely for it. That I don't think, but I think they do realize it, and I I kind of I think they maybe see it as a a pleasant coincidence or a nice little killing two birds at one stone kind of thing. <laughs> The enthusiasts, the people, the, the the folks who really appreciate the history of the parks and the finer points and the details and the nuance of the actual park experience, that doesn't equate to money for them. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like they're, in some ways, to uh, making a little bit of a conscious effort at least to kind of shoo us off. <laughs> like they don't want us. I re I truly feel at this point that Disney doesn't want me going. They're at a point now where they're just kind of like, yeah, history's great, fuck it. Um, <laughs> yeah, Disney existed, whatever. They still love to try to... Uh, they'll twist one little off-the-cuff quote he made to try to... Oh, they love doing as, that! ...to somehow uh, justify why they're doing whatever the newest thing they're doing is. And that, that's like the classic Animal Kingdom thing. Is like, like Oh, yeah, somewhere, yeah. It's like he made one comment one time, like, yeah, I like animals. Well, it's like yeah. it's like yeah, I, mean, I like I like you know I like animals because you to had be the um... treated right and and preserved and people can see them. I like that. And so it's like oh yeah, so he definitely wanted to have a a not a zoo theme park. Yeah, because they made the the True Life Adventure documentaries. Oh, they twisted that too. It's like, like but that's different. He wanted to do that. Right, Do documenting animals in the wild is not the same. It doesn't thing mean he as... wanted to to go capture a bunch of animals and bring them uh, yes. to Florida and build half a park and yeah, build a half-ass park that's themed too well <laughs> and and really impossible to get around. Doesn't mean he wanted that. Yeah, I mean, come on. But anyway, they love doing that, so they still love doing that. They'll bring up history, kind of revisionist history, in that sense. But you know, they don't really want to go into the real history any anymore. Right. So I feel they don't even want us. They don't even want me there. They, 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 they just want just these naive families, you know, young families with the young kids that aren't going to think about this at all. They're definitely not going to overthink it like we are. Uh, and they're just going to go and they're going to fall into all the traps mm -hmm. and they're going to just, they're going to be manipulated the way Disney wants to manipulate them and they're going to do what they want them to do. Yeah. And that's all they want. Yeah, and they don't really care about en en enthusiasm and that kind of stuff anymore. I really think they'd rather not have us because all we do is 
mic ourselves up <laughs> or, you know, sit, or, sit in front of the word processor for a little while and complain. Right? It's all we do. <laughs> the word processor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm an no, old, I I'm love that. That was great. You know, to be a park enthusiast, you know, of any kind, just, you know, a Disney, a huge Disney nut or or not isn't cheap. You know, it's an expensive hobby. Mm, yeah. So, uh, you know, of course, whenever you, you know, if, even if you're a Disney person, whenever you go there, y yeah, you are going to look for ways to save a couple of bucks because that season pass costs you like $500,000 billion. <laughs> the family that, you know, like that family of four that they're, they're not enthusiasts. They're just going down there for their, you know, annual vacation, their summer vacation. They're going to blow a lot more money. So that's why they want them and they don't want us. It's another reason. Yeah. No, that's the main reason, I think. Yeah. They're not really so worried about complaint, you know, podcasts and, and, <laughs> and blogs. I would just bring that up as another well, thing. Yeah. But, but yeah. So I the, mean, the Family Four is going to go all out when they go down there. We're not. No, I know. And we are going to do Universal. Right. Because we're enthusiasts and we're still going to check out the other stuff that's going yeah. on. And... We're weighing I, them down. I think we're taking up space in the park, and we're not spending money. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, from their point of view, it's getting rid of the dead weight. Yeah, and I think they're really okay with us going to Universal. They're like, hey, why don't you guys go over there? <laughs> <laughs> to go back to where we started, uh, they're they're going even younger with the stuff they're doing. They don't. It's not even just they don't want enthusiasts. They don't even really want an older crowd at all anymore. Didn't they stop the grad nights? They did. They even stopped that. They really, you know, they really, it's like they really would be fine if they just ended up in a place where it was just all birth to, or I guess really birth, whatever. When it was the, <laughs> when you could start enjoying stuff three, I don't know, yeah, like, you know, three to three to 12 three or to something. 12 and that's, and then, and their parents and that's it. Yeah. Which again, to go back to where we started, it's kind of sad because that's completely uh, opposite from what Walt Disney wanted. Yeah, it's really weird. I mean, everything comes and goes. Every 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 new regime of management that runs a company or corporation, you know, has their time, and then they they give the reins over to new people. So, uh, yeah, who knows what what the next ten to twenty five years will really bring? Uh, if it'll really stay this way, if Disney will stay on this path. It, this is really so new right now. That's why this was great to do this. Uh, now is it really is a hot topic because this is just really just just happening right now, and I don't think enough times even passed yet uh, to even know if it's if this whole Disney strategy really is going to work or not. I don't even know if they know yet. Yeah, it's kind of funny it's, we're talking about it really while well, it's as happening. it's happening. Yeah, it's it really which is great. It's not like it's something that just happened. Like five, ten years ago, it's like it's it's happening right now, and it's not over yet. Yeah, so we don't know where it's gonna go. I, I mean, it's interesting enough that the direction that Disney is heading. And I do mean it, it is genuinely interesting. You know, I, I don't necessarily agree with it and all this stuff, but it truly is a great experiment. Yeah, there you go. That's maybe so. The way if put there, it. yeah, if there is a silver lining to, I mean, I rather this wasn't happening. I would rather that Disney was playing. Universal's game and it was just the two major forces in, in Florida in Central Florida just duking it out and just trading bombs you know yeah. one we do Potter we do Avatar next year next year we're gonna do Hunger Games and Universal and now next year we're gonna do Star Wars Land and you know in uh, Hollywood Studios yeah it would be and like the glory days of uh, the Coaster Wars it would be like a Coaster Wars only it would be like themed movie land wars or That'd something incredible you know and i'd rather see that uh but if there's a silver lining to take out of what is actually happening it's that at least at least from the side of what disney's doing it is a very interesting first of its kind experiment but the thing is like it, it, that would be interesting enough on its own but you throw in the fact that that universal you know at least you know in orlando it's just going crazy with the building and adding attractions and themed lands. It's just accentuates what Disney's doing and what Universal's doing. 
So it's it's really yeah, kind of fact, amazing that these two things are happening in tandem at the same time. Yeah, because it's, it's like one is making the other like burn even brighter. Yes, and it's yeah. be even more obvious because it's the contrast now. It's just so stark. Yeah, but I do kind of have to uh, say um, that I don't really want to go to Walt Disney World anymore. And I can honestly say yeah. that it's that's not just the to be outrageous on a podcast, but I, I really don't want to go. Right. No, it, it's I'm horrible. actually it's looking really forward horrible. to doing a, a Florida swing and avoid Disney. So and again, I, and I know we have said this before on a, on a previous uh, episode, but uh, Disney will keep doing what they're doing until they see a significant uh, drop in attendance and, and or spending. Hmm. That's the thing. Yeah. So enthusiasts not going any longer is not going to really eat into that. Uh, it's not going to eat into their profits. They're fine with that. But we'll see how how the families that they do want react uh, to all this over time. If yep. they really go for it, the overuse of the phones, the, all the planning and everything, or if people, even just casual families, get kind of fed up after a while. Or if just the lack of... Uh, of adding attractions catches up with them at some point. Hasn't yet, but... Yeah. If that... Yeah, that's actually something we didn't talk about. Eventually would catch up with them. Just the fact that, you know, once you do everything a couple times, a couple different vacations, if they're not adding, families, even the same families might turn away just because. That's an experiment. How long can you go without uh, adding a new attraction? Of, of any significance. Yeah, well, even they're aware of that because they are, they do still throw, they have that, they dangle that carrot. Yeah. You know, Avatar, it's coming one yeah. of these days. The second they see a drop, uh, the slightest down tick in attendance, that's when they'll suddenly fast track that construction and get it done. Yeah. You can only completely refurbish and or, you know, put a new overlay on your existing rides, you know, for so long. You know, it's like you can you can only rebuild Big Thunder Mountain and Space Mountain so many times <laughs> and add new things to them. And you can only, you know, add so many overlays to Test Track or, you know, whatever attraction. Yeah, they, 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 they were at the forefront of creativity and innovation, and now they're not. They're a shell of their former creative selves. They've kind of lost it. They kind of stopped bothering. To be creative because no matter what it is now even like cars but it was just reusing the test track technology from the mid 90s yeah and even avatar the pandora it the big main attraction they're going to put in there is rumored to be <laughs> the next version of soren not even a new technology just yeah reusing it again maybe making it a little more thrilling and i completely believe that too i i mean it, it Pandora's not going to open for a bunch of years, but I don't think they're going to put in a new ride system for that. Not the way they're going now. They're not going to be bothering. Yeah, it's, it's been so long. They're going to bother themselves it's, to do that. Yeah, it's hard to believe that they they would do it. It's been so long. But on the other hand, Universal, it's like any new <laughs> major ride they open, it's like, is it a new ride system? I don't know. <laughs> Gotta just ride it to find out. <laughs> Gotta see what they're doing. Yeah, they're just starting to combine so many different things, and they're just doing anything. Yeah. To just make it somehow new and fresh and put some originality into it, which is which is great. So, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how this all continues to play out, to see how Universal continues. We'll keep you informed here on Thanks for Riding. Thanks for Riding! Y'all. Hey guys, we'd love to know what you think. Post a comment or question on thanksforwriting.tumblr.com or email us at thanksforwriting at yahoo.com. We're on Facebook too. Facebook? You guys are on your own.